Gotta catch them all, Pokemon. What? A 28 year old man can't sing the Pokemon theme? Come on. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, I'm your host today, Gilded Aegis. Uh, I'm not joined by Winter. Uh, just our schedules didn't line up for today, and it makes the most sense just to get this out while it's still somewhat new. So, if you can't already tell, we're going to be diving into some really big and juicy news about Pokemon. Now, last week on Friday, Nintendo, more specifically Pokemon Company, released a Direct which detailed three games. The new Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, which are remakes of the Gen 4 games Diamond and Pearl, and even more crazily, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, we might touch on Pokemon Snap near the end of this video, but our main focus today will be on Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So, let's play the trailer and just have a quick look. Now, I'm going to skip ahead here to the meat and potatoes. Now, I'm going to be able to talk while it's going over, but a lot of fans were really predicting and hyping this game up before release. They were hoping it would be you know, released years ago and mentioned at least somewhat, but it's here now. And if you can't already tell, the overworld sprite for the main character is a little weird. The head's massive, the body's about the same size as the head, so the ratio is off. Uh, they're apparently called chibis, or chibi figures, and in the spirit of the original games, even though the original games were chibi, it actually wasn't quite as apparent, the size difference in the head to the model, and it didn't look quite as weird. It kind of gives me, you know, Animal Crossing vibes. But that's one of the biggest gripes that, you know, fans of the games have right now, is these chibi sprites, and also during the Direct, one of the things that kind of sticks out as potentially jarring or an issue is the fact that they're going to be made it com completely remade in the spirit of the original games. Now, what that means, or what has some fans worried, is that, you know, is the quality of life updates that were included in Pokemon Diamond, are they going to be included in these games? So, on that note, let's just rewind the video here a little bit. So, it, right, so this is called... Pokemon Super Contest, and this was only available in Pokemon Platinum. So that's one piece of evidence that is kind of leading further support to this game, actually having some of the quality of life things and some of the improvements and more, just more things to do in the game. Let's keep on going. Now, one thing I will highlight right away is if we slow this scene in this town down just a little bit, because now... There was a certain event that happened in Pokemon Platinum, revolving around the mythical Pokemon called Shaman. Now, Shaman was an event Pokemon, but in order to change Shaman from the land form to the sky form, you need to have access to a certain item. Now, this, this female character here, I don't know much about her, but what I've been reading online is that she is actually a person who gives you the item to change the form. So what this kind of indicates is that we could potentially see the Shaman Legendary event in the game in the same spirit that we've seen, you know, the Deoxys event in uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Another good thing. Thing. Let's find it. Where is Porygon Z? I think it's going to be in this segment. There he is. Porygon Z. Big thing with Porygon Z. Big boy. Big Porygon Z. The big thing about Porygon Z is the fact that I don't believe that Porygon Z was actually available until Pokemon Platinum. So this is leading more support towards some of the quality of life updates and improvements in Platinum being present in this game. In a similar style we've seen for Heart Gold and Soul Silver compared to Gold and Silver, in that instance we saw the expanded uh, storyline and continuation of the storyline for Suicune. Uh, things such as the, the Johto uh, Safari Zone, uh, different means to get Groudon and uh, Kyogre and the Gen 4 Legendaries Dialga and Palkia. Uh, I think you could also get Giratina too. So if we're seeing all of these hints of Pokemon Platinum possibly having elements in this game, then what I also wonder is, will the Distortion World be in this game? Will the quality of life improvements where there's more fire type Pokemon and Platinum, will there be more in you know Diamond and Pearl? Because if you can recall, Diamond and Pearl only had five fire types. The Chimchar line and the Ponyta line. 
that's it. I think there may have been a way to get uh, Magmar, but I think that was only in Pokemon Platinum, which is again another area where Pokemon Platinum presented a lot of improvements over the base Diamond and Pearl. So that's all for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, but you can see that, you know, it's a bit different than what maybe some people would have expected for the remakes. Typically we've seen that with Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, they adopted the Gen 6 graphics. With Heart Gold and Soul Silver, they adopted the Gen 4 graphics. So since this came out in Gen 8, some people were thinking that this would mean that this would be like a three-dimensional game in the same style as Sword and Shield. I know not everybody not everybody really liked the, the graphics or the design style of Sword and Shield from a design point of view, but also just aesthetically with a lot of texture pop-ins, frame rate dips, just poor quality of the game. And unfortunately, it was compared a lot of the time in the, the wild zone or the wild area to uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild. So taking it back to the style, which is a lot simpler, you know, you have the, the, the framing of the ground, uh, you know, the characters being, like, almost top-down. Uh, it's simpler in nature. Another thing people worried about is that was the underground passageway going to be in the game? This is a spot where you could do a lot of, like, digging in the walls to find fossils and gemstones. I, I think it had a, a strong online component. I didn't play the online a whole bunch when I was a kid just because I didn't really understand how to set it up. So I basically played this, the base game, and that was it. Uh, we still get Turtwig, Chimchar, and Piplup, so that's good. Uh, I wonder if we'll also get access to, you know, Lunala in the game, uh, Darkrai through similar events, kind of like, you know, how we got access to do Deoxys in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. That would be really cool. Uh, one last thing. So I know I'm personally guilty of this, but I would really love to see the return of Mega Evolution in this game, because... It's, it was, I think, in my opinion, the most fun gimmick out of the three gimmicks that were introduced, being Mega's Z moves, or Z moves, and Gigantamax. I think Gigantamax is not quite as fun. It's, it feels like it's like a lazy thing to do. It's simple. Your Pokemon gets big, and it gets big moves, and it, you know, they can steamroll the match. Uh, but a hint that these may be present in Brilliant Diamond and Shiny Pearl is because Pokemon Shopper... I'm not familiar with their Twitter handle or even who they are, but they did actually release uh, a new round of action figures that are going to be featuring Mega Lucario and Mega Charizard X. So that could hint at Megas being present in the game, and if so, that would be amazing. Megas are so fun. They keep, like, they almost make your battles feel more fresh. I feel like they could have expanded the story on Mega Evolution and Gen 8 more, but they didn't. Uh, so we'll see where this goes. Ideally, Megas are present. That would make Cynthia in the Pokemon League an absolute nightmare to face. Although we have fairy types, so she's not quite as scary. Okay, cool. Moving on, let's take a look at Pokemon Legends Arceus. This is Nintendo's, or sorry, Game Freak's first crack at an open world Pokemon game. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I personally was really hoping that Sword and Shield would be open world. To no avail, but... Here we are, we're getting it finally. The game actually takes place in feudal Japan, I believe hundreds or thousands of years before the base Gen 4 games. It's based in the Sinnoh region, and uh, you will have to venture out and create the first Pokedex. And so you'll see that the worlds are big, the landscapes are big, uh, the graphics still look, they look significantly better than Sword and Shield. And hopefully they take advantage or full advantage of the Switch Pro hardware. Uh, the trees look better, grass looks better, it does give me similar vibes to Breath of the Wild. It looks like it takes advantage of the Pokemon throwing ball mechanic from Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu. Uh, so, I mean, the battle mechanics, they look interesting. Uh, I wonder if you can actually like, battle Pokemon in the wild. The only thing that was just a big concern there is back here, let's look at that chim uh, chingling again. Just the frame rate really dips. There. See how slow it moves? The frame rate just dips substantially. And I myself, as well as many people in the community, were very worried that this is going to be representative of the final product. Ideally, that's not the case. The game is going to launch in early 2022, so hopefully that's enough time to, you know, to polish at the game. And 
here we go. The starters for Pokemon Legends Arceus. We have Cyndaquil from Johto. We have Rowlet from Alola and Oshawott from Unova. Now, it actually took me a little while to understand the full reasoning behind these starters. First off, I feel like these two guys here, they're really underrepresented in the fandom. Oshawott, though. Uh, Oshawott evolves into Samra. So Samra, Feudal Japan, we have our Samurai Pokemon. Rowlet evolves into Decidueye, and he is our Archer. But when you get to uh, Cyndaquil, he evolves into Typhlosion. Now, it took some research, some digging around on Twitter and Reddit, but what I discovered is that Typhlosion like, is roughly translative to Bakufu, which then translates into Shogun. And Shogun is the title for military generals in Japan, specifically, I guess, feudal Japan. So Typhlosion could lead some credence into that, uh, just based on the animal itself. Uh, Cyndaquil is based on a honey badger, I believe, and they're found in Japan, so... It does make sense to see these three guys here. They're just across gens. I'm glad we're not seeing Charmander again, as much as I love Charmander. Um, we're just overrepresented with Gen 1, just fandom and uh, just splashing out material just because they know it'll, it'll sell like hotcakes. What else in this video? Anything else? No. But I think all in all, this is going to be a really fun game. Uh, it, I believe it's only single player. So that doesn't sound there's going to be a capability for multiplayer online, but maybe that'll change. I hope I have my, my information right. But, like, the graphics look good. Uh, it seems like it has a similar battle system and style to Let's Go and a little bit of Pokemon Sword and Shield. And it doesn't appear there to be a trainer there, so that might be a Garchomp that you fight in the wild. So that's kind of cool. What else do we have here? Uh... You know, we have a Piplup in the wild, so Piplup is cool, makes sense here in Sinnoh. We also saw Chimchar in the video. We have our, our Lord and Savior, Bidoof. Uh, old Pokeball, again, it talks about the starters. Uh, Arceus, God, but there's also Bidoof, so you know, you gotta consider that. So, that's actually all. I know I said I would touch on new Pokemon Snap. Uh, just briefly, it seems like, based on footage... It is the natural evolution in that series. You know, the, the game series was put on ice for what felt like, I think it was 20 years or 18 years, somewhere around there. But, you know, it's making use of new technology. You know, we're in a new region. Uh, we have the ability to share pictures that we take of the Pokemon online and edit them. Ideally, you know, you could rate them and review them, see your friends, stuff like that. It could be cool to join other people's regions. And that could be kind of cool because similar to the Masuda method of breeding shiny Pokemon in the games, where if you have like a ditto from a different region, it makes it easier. It increases the chances of breeding a shiny. If you have somebody else from a different region, maybe that gives you a chance to spawn, you know, more likely chance to get a shiny Pokemon in the game. I mean, who knows if there's going to be a shiny, you know, Pokemon, the overall Pokemon Snap, but it would be cool. Uh, there was there wasn't a shiny Pokemon in Gen 1, so that kind of lead support for it to be not in the base, uh, the old uh, Pokemon Snap. Yeah, uh, I think we have a lot, a good swath of Pokemon to feed us for the next year or so. We'll have Pokemon Legends Unite, which is kind of like a MOBA. We'll have Pokemon Snap in April. We'll have Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shiny Pearl in the fall, I presume, or like November area. And then we'll have this. Ideally, this gets a little more time to bake in the oven. Like ideally early 2022, is around February, March, or even April-ish. Honestly, with this kind of game, and just what seems to be the scope, games by, by Game Freak and Pokemon games in general, they have more time to be in the oven. That'll make them have more time to, you know, get the polish they need. I think people were just uh, really taken aback by how unpolished uh, Sword and Shield were, the, the cutting of the decks, you know, not having the national decks there. Uh, just a lot of issues, not having Megas, you know, really rubbed a lot of people in the community the wrong way. But let me know what you guys think about Pokemon Legends, Arceus, and Pokemon Shining Pearl and Brilliant Diamond. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you later.